Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Computer Science 354, Machine Organization and Programming. My name is Michael Dosher. I'm the instructor for the course. This course is offered through the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, if you found the videos on YouTube, you are welcome to watch them, of course. Uh, you won't have access to any of the content hidden behind our Canvas paywall. Uh, apologize for that. I'm not allowed to share some of the uh, copyrighted content that I'm using. Um, let's see, I want to begin today with just a brief introduction to the course. So for that, let me jump over to the Canvas page, and you guys not from Wisconsin can get a peek behind the scenes. And uh, you guys who are taking the class from, you know, enrolled in the class, uh, pull this up and follow along. All right, so here we are looking at our Canvas homepage. My version probably looks a little bit different than yours because I've got all the editing buttons and tools over here. All right, uh, welcome to Computer Science 354. Uh, up here in red at the very top, I will have all of the really super important links uh, announcements. These are almost certainly going to be about when I'm late getting things out there that I should have uh, already done. Uh, in fact, this first announcement here was about yesterday where I was not having a great day. Um, the next section is going to be just some important links and I will keep adding to this. This page is going to be con under construction throughout the entire semester. We'll just keep building onto it. Uh, first up, um, so important links actually got the syllabus, office hours, instructions. I'm going to come back to this in a second. This next part for weeks 1 through 15, there'll be a, a section here with the, the playlist, the PowerPoint slides, uh, the quiz that we'll have, or the midterm, whatever homework assignments we're having for the week. Um, homework 1 will be released probably Thursday or Friday. Um, the reading assignment, um, and it's just going to look like something like this. I just put this up as sort of a mock-up because I'm making the playlist right now. And then down at the bottom here we have the tentative topic list. Um, the course is really broken down into um, three sections. So the first part, beginning here, C programming basics, up through um, about right here, low-level C programming. Uh, the first five weeks of the course are about programming in C. Uh, following that, the middle part of the course is going to be about uh, assembly. So starting in week six, um, assembly, 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 assembly. Right through, yeah, through week 11, somewhere around there, uh, we're going to be talking about assembly language programming. And most of what we'll do is we'll write C code, generate the assembly from it, and then take a look and understand how it's working uh, under the hood. And then the last four weeks of the class, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, are going to be uh, special topics of some kind. We'll look at dynamic memory allocation and an introduction to operating systems. All right, so I've got two midterms on this uh, schedule right now. Uh, midterm one is going to be wherever we finish C programming, we'll have a midterm about the C programming. If I finish it a week early, it will probably won't move this up. If I take extra time, we'll move it back one. Um, and same with the midterm two. That's going to follow whenever we finish the assembly language section, then we'll have the midterm. I have no plans to move it earlier, but if I need to, I'll move it later even though it might squish it really close to the final exam. So midterm one is uh, going to cover C program. Midterm two, because we're generating all of our assembly from C, it builds on the first section. Um, and then the final exam covers absolutely everything. So it does build up as we go through the entire course. OK, next up, I want to take a look at the syllabus. All right, first up, this is machine organization and programming. We've got two sections of this course. Section three is the virtual one offered through UW. Um, that's the one the majority of the students watching these videos are going to be enrolled in, so welcome. And then I'm also teaching an in-person section at Epic on their campus. That's section 10. Um, so I'll be going over there Wednesday afternoons, uh, Wednesday evenings, to deliver an in-person lecture. It's three hours on Wednesdays from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Um, the Epic folks, if you're watching this video, you are perfectly welcome to watch the video sequence. Uh, I have to apologize if you're in the virtual section, section three, you do not have the power to go over to Epic and view the lecture on their campus. That's for Epic employees only. So apologize for that. All right, uh, let me introduce the team. First, let me start with myself. I'm the instructor, Michael Dosher. Uh, I've got a PowerPoint slide. Let me pull that up real quick. All right, so go ahead. Please call me Mike. Uh, my email address is there, mdosher at whisk.edu. It's all over the website, uh, so it's not difficult to find me. Um, so my PhD is actually in chemistry. I went to Luther College in Iowa, got my PhD at the University of South Carolina, where I worked on um, probe microscopy and uh, electrochemistry. After that, I took a job 
working for the Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, D.C., where I worked on some top secret stuff involving more electrochemistry, inorganic chemistry, and sensors. Um, following that, I took a job teaching chemistry at Benedictine College, a little tiny college in Atchison, Kansas. Um, and it was there that curiosity got the best of me, and I just needed to know more about computer science. And that's when I started taking undergraduate classes in computer science. And then I actually got into the university here, uh, UW-Madison, finished my master's degree here. Um, once I finished that, I took a job working at SciArt Software. It's a small startup company in Madison where we developed software that engineers would use to uh, help design parts, to try and figure out, uh, you can see an example of a part uh, over here on the right, um, and try and figure out how they can reshape this to make it lighter. You know, This is a part in progress. I could drill more holes into it, make it lighter, that sort of thing. Um, the company ultimately didn't make it, and I took a job well, during the whole time, I was teaching a one-credit night class, um, usually C++, at the university. And then I just uh, applied for the full-time faculty associate position, and now I'm here full-time. Um, this is actually, let me think here, eight years teaching chemistry. This is my fourth year teaching computer science, and this will be my second semester as a faculty associate. Um, yeah, so I enjoy getting out. Uh, I've done four Tough mutters now. It's a pretty good picture of me. Um, yeah, obstacle course racing. I hiked the Grand Canyon last year. I went winter camping. I do, I like to call it adventure travel. It's sort of just for fun. I work out like crazy. And I got to talk a little bit too about some of my health issues that will probably affect the class. They, they were a problem last semester. I don't see them going away anytime soon. Um, so uh, last September, my heart actually stopped. It, it's not technically a heart attack. Um, that would involve the blockage of blood vessels. Uh, in this case, it was a nerve. Um, okay, so the truth is they've done every test that they can think of. They only really test for bad things and didn't find anything. So they really don't know what's going on. Uh, experts' best guess is that it, it's some sort of electrolyte imbalance. So perhaps low, low potassium or something like that, which affects the nerve impulse going and telling my heart what speed to beat at which uh, is a problem because I, I still have occasional bouts where my heart doesn't go fast enough and I feel incredibly fatigued and really lightheaded. Um, it's part of the reason the course is designed with this weekly schedule because on average over the course of a full week I have uh, many pretty good days but every now and then there's a day where I'm not doing so well and uh, what I'm hoping is that if I have a bad day I uh, if there's not enough of them, you guys will never even notice that I'm upstairs just resting on the couch. Um, anyway, that's my goal. And the rest of it will just sort of smooth over. Rather than trying to keep like a regular Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, I found that a lot more difficult to stick to. Um, I'm also a single dad, and so my son is here half time, and having him here trying to do school is also very distracting. That's another reason for the weekly schedule. It's to sort of like take those moments when I feel good, when he's not bothering me and I can get all the work done all at once. That's the goal. We'll see how that really works out. All right, with that in mind, I also spend a lot of time going to the gym for my cardiac therapy. Uh, at this point, I am just just work out, just do cardio at the gym pretty much every day. I also go to the hospital a lot. So as far as like with global pandemic going on, global places that, you know, a, a global pandemic, um, I go a lot of places that are not particularly safe. I'm probably not the safest person, and I have not yet gotten COVID. I'm super careful because I know I go these places and pretty much nowhere else, so hospitals and gyms. Anyway, um, just wanted to share all that stuff so you guys have some sort of background as to what's going on, um, and I'll keep you up to date if it ever affects the class or how it affects the class, it probably will. All right, let me jump back over uh, to the syllabus. All right, here we are. Um, so I've got a team of, well, there's seven of us. We've got four uh, TAs. Uh, those are going to be graduate students helping us out, as well as two undergraduate peer mentors this term. Um, our head TA is Abby Matthews. She's the one who's already reached out to you guys with the survey. Uh, we've got a special TA uh, who's going to focus on helping the folks at Epic. Um, feel free to write to him as well, uh, Cameron, our official Epic TA. And then our LT, just go through some of this stuff. Um, this is the official course description. I fixed the grammar from the catalog, but other than that, it's the same thing. Uh, we're gonna talk about computer systems, the C programming language. We're gonna look at the interaction between the code that we write in C and 
how it gets translated into assembly, and then how that actually interacts with the hardware. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the address space, dynamic memory, um, operating systems, um, the assembly language compiling process, um, all right, that kind of stuff. All right, let's see, important course info. This is uh, required to put that here. Let's see, introduction, go ahead and read that on your own. Um, yep, here we go. So we've got two sections for this. There's the online lecture version. That's the one you're watching this video right now. This is going to be a weekly series of YouTube videos. Uh, I taught this course over the summer and I prepared videos for that course also. I'm going to take advantage of all of the good videos that I made over the summer and just keep using those pieces. So you may be looking at the clock in the lower right hand corner and see that this was recorded over the summer. It's because I liked what I'd done there and I'm keeping that se a segment. Um, there are a lot of places where I like have learned a new tool and want to bring in a new idea or feel like I could do a little bit better or have a different example. So I'm going to create all new content for all the pieces where I think I can do better. Um, so let's see here. Uh, the plan is to release a weekly playlist. Um, it's going to be a composite of the pieces I liked, the new stuff that I'll be adding. Uh, it turns out, uh, to be honest, let's face it, video lectures are probably one of the worst ways to learn computer science. There's no interaction. If you just sit there and watch the video, you're not going to get a lot out of it, especially if you're in a room with distractions. You know, if you're like, kids are playing um, Xbox or something, or your roommate's playing Xbox, or uh, your sister's playing Dance Dance Revolution or practicing violin while you're trying to watch, especially if you've got this on a mobile device and you're trying to like follow along with a laptop, it's hard to do. I'm going to do my best to make everything as big as possible. I'll actually look at that. I can do better. There we go. Big as possible. Um, so you guys can still read it. Um, and I'm also going to do my best to make these videos, obviously not the one about the syllabus, but the rest of them as interactive as possible. So you guys can pause the video, try an activity. That's the best way to learn. It's actually do it yourself. Um, particularly with computer science. You've got to type these things in. You've got to try them. You've got to make the mistakes. See what the error message says. Um, so that's the idea. I'm going to make these as interactive as possible and I'm going to take advantage of the like all the things that YouTube lets us do uh, for example you could pause the video you can walk away you're not gonna miss anything uh, you can uh, break this into pieces um, you can you know, pause the video and try something out if you need to hear something again you can rewind and replay that section um, and if you're just studying for the you know midterm or something you can play the video at you know 2x speed and just cruise through it and just like Remind yourself, and if there's a piece that you missed, you could slow it down and listen to that again. So YouTube offers a lot of features for us that I'm going to try and take advantage of. Things you don't get in a real in-person lecture. The downside is it's really difficult to ask questions, so we're providing a number of avenues for communication. Let me see here. Um, all right. So the video lectures, they're likely, you know, if this is a three credit class, normally you would meet Tuesday, Thursday for 75 minutes. The videos are likely not going to match up to that 150 minutes per week. Um, take into account the fact that I expect you guys to pause the video and um, do something that's going to make it a little bit shorter. And all those questions that come up, and particularly over the summer, thing, people would ask things on Piazza. I'm going to try and incorporate those questions into the lecture and address things that you know people may come up and ask you know, after class in a normal lecture class. So that's going to make the videos a little longer when I try and like guess what questions you guys might have ahead of time. So somewhere, at, hopefully it'll be about 150 minutes, but likely, likely shorter than that, to be honest. Um, and then the weeks that do go longer, uh, the goal for a three credit class is that you spend, um, well, the university wants one hour of substantive interaction and two hours outside of class. So you can just think of the video as, you know, part of those two hours of outside of class if it runs long. All right, uh, again, um, for the epic section, if you're watching this, uh, the plan is to deliver a live in-person lecture on the epic campus. We'll be live streaming the lecture for the epic students. So if you're on campus trying to watch this in your office, uh, I sent an email this evening about how to connect to that. And I'm working with the uh, uh, AV team over at epic to figure out how that works. And I don't they have a plan, and I haven't been told it yet, so we'll see what happens. All right, um, next up, a uh, quick commercial break. We'll be right back. All right, today's lecture is brought to you by Computer Systems, a programmer's perspective. I will be using the second edition for the class. Um, it's completely possible to get away with the third edition if you guys want. Um, 
the uh, I don't actually own a third edition. My understanding is that the major difference is that they've added a lot of material for 64-bit um, computers. So they go into all the different names of the extra registers and the extra commands that you will need to choose uh, the 64-bit registers instead of the 32-bit ones. In my opinion, it doesn't actually add that much extra to the class to have that extra complexity. Uh, they work the same way. And so, and as far as like the like super advanced details, we're not going to get into those anyway. All right, but please be aware that as you are um, making your selection, uh, the page numbers may not exactly match up to what I'm doing uh, with the, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be referring to the second edition. And it'll save you guys about 120 bucks if you go with the second edition instead. All right, you will also need, let me see, the uh, C programming language. This is a book that actually is written by the inventors of the C language itself. Uh, this is the second edition. It's a classic. Uh, every programmer should have this on their shelf. And again, um, there are actually a bunch of free places you can get this book. I've got the link to Amazon right here. Uh, if you look around on the internet, you can uh, just do a quick search. You'll find multiple places where you can download it for free. All right, in order to provide you guys with the opportunity for substantial communication and interaction, like uh, you get in a real class and not just watching videos, I've got a bunch of different ways that we'll be using to communicate for the course content. Um, first, Canvas is going to be our clearinghouse is where everything will be linked from. It's the most important. The most important page is the home page where all the announcements and the schedule will be. All right, next up, Piazza is an online forum you guys can use to ask questions. If you're new to the University of Wisconsin, uh, just go ahead and click the link. It'll bring you over there. Uh, if not, I'm sure you've used it in another class. A um, couple notes. Uh, first, please do not post code that you've written for homework that's more than five lines long. Uh, this is considered cheating. Um, and then uh, lots of students are going to ask questions here, so it's a great place to go and see what questions they have. Uh, we inc strongly encourage you guys to answer each other's questions. Um, I've got one post. It looks like this. Please be aware that a couple things. First, before posting, uh, make sure you do a search and see if there's any um, similar questions where you may have already had your question answered. Uh, this is known as Piazza Bloat, and we have many, many questions on the same topic, and it makes it, makes it hard to search for things that are actually useful. Uh, so when posting, please make your post very clear. I'm trying to do this. Uh, here's the error message I get. Here's a screenshot of something cryptic I don't understand. Um, and then uh, as you guys just go through, um, we're gonna we're probably not going to respond immediately, the team um, of TAs and peer mentors and myself. We're going to give you guys a chance to try and answer each other's questions. There's really a lot of value in trying to explain something to a classmate. Um, and then just, uh, i got to highlight this. Uh, before you respond to a question, it is it is incredibly fun to spot a duplicate question, and then sort of like a little passive aggressive way to like say, "Hey, you guys didn't search. Do a better job searching." You can use the at link to reference that post. So up here, you can see in my uh, URL bar, this is CID equal five. I can just reference this as at six. Oops, that's a six, not a five. What am I thinking? Yep. Um, to uh, indicate a duplicate post. All right, again, um, please don't post any code publicly. All right, all right, back to good stuff. Uh, office hours and lab hours. We've got a special tab. I'll be coming back to that in a minute with the instructions and schedule. Uh, also, we'll be holding, um, I'm going to be holding a, an optional live Q&A session on Fridays. We'll start at 8.30. I'll hang out till at least 9. If there's nobody there, and in the past, um, especially in like the first week of class, it's been pretty uh, empty. Um, but if anybody has any questions, you just want to like get to know me a little better, come and hang out. I'll be there uh, Friday morning. Um, and if you want to just talk to the other students, uh, there's no there's no scheduled content. I'm not going to introduce anything new. This is just a way to provide interaction um, between me and uh, all of you guys. That's not just me sitting in my office in the gymnast sun hasn't come up yet. Um, it's actually cold down here by myself. So uh, it's probably good for me to you know get out and meet you guys too. All right, uh, let's see here. Email. Um, I've got the groups. Uh, University of Wisconsin sets these up for me. So you'll be getting announcements from me from uh, ggroups at wisc.edu for either section 3 or section 10. 
Um, and again, all the announcements are going to be posted on Canvas, so you can just check that. The email will mostly be, I've put a new announcement up, there's new material ready, or something about it being delayed because of my health. One of the two are most likely going to happen. Um, let's see, also, if you have a question that's not appropriate for Piazza, uh, something that's personal, you can uh, like email your TA or the instructor. Um, on the TA page, I've got a who should I contact. And uh, if all you need is an extension or something like that, you can send that to a TA, we'll get you on the list. If it's something that requires my direct attention, absolutely send me an email. All right, let me see here, next up. So office hours, so we have office hours and lab hours. Office hours are basically, you'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Uh, I'll show you the system in just a second, but uh, you'll send us a meeting link and then um, we'll go, we will join your meeting link. So choose something where you know how to share your screen. This is a great place to work on debugging your code or looking for issues or if you have questions about the course content. Um, we're also going to be providing lab hours. These are a little different. We'll hold them over on um, Canvas's Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, which you uh, can't see from the screen. I'll, I'll show you in a second where it is. It's on the left-hand tab. Maybe I'm just scrolled out too far. Yep, um, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra right there up at the top. There we go. Okay. And during uh, lab hours, so a peer mentor or TA will be there. Um, you guys can go. Um, multiple people can just join these sessions. Uh, it's a great place to talk about strategy for solving the homework problems. Um, you, you can use it a lot like office hours. Probably we won't see more than a few students at a time. However, um, you will not have the power to share your screen during these sessions. Um, if you wanted to like, talk strategy with other students, the, you know, there may be other students present also. So this is just another way for us to provide sort of a live interaction experience uh, for the students. All right, next up, um, grading. How do I pass the class? This is probably the reason you've been fast forwarding through the video right up until now. Here's the idea. We're going to do homework um, in the form of projects. These are going to be, well, let me just go over this. Uh, we'll have a, so we'll do projects, uh, multiple homework assignments throughout the semester that gives you the opportunity to practice. Uh, there's going to be uh, either a quiz or a midterm every week beginning next week. And the first week we have our survey. So there's something every week in the like category of quizzes. Um, we'll drop some of the, I believe, the two lowest quizzes. Is that what I said? Yep. Two lowest quizzes. Um, and these are just going to be uh, questions about the previous week's content, just as a way to like help you guys stay on task to keep up it can be really easy to just see a weekly YouTube playlist and not focus, have it on the background, or say, oh, I'll watch it later, I'll do it later, and not get started. Um, so this is just uh, for me, and it's a chance for you guys to just check and see, so I watched the videos, did I really get it? Um, that's the idea. It's supposed to be, um, mm, what's the word, uh, not stressful, low stress, just did I get it? I want to give you guys some points for doing it if you like take the time to go through my quiz. So that's why we're going to be awarding 10% of the grade for that. Let's see. Uh, then we've got two low stakes midterms, 10% um, each, and 20% uh, on that final. Let's see. Is that add up? To, yep, looks good. All right. Um, I, I need to comment here on the scores, too. I have an extremely harsh grading curve set up. 95% uh, to get an A. It's probably one of the most rigorous in the university. And the reason for that is because on all of these projects, like 50% of the points right here, it's a coding assignment where I say, here's what I want you to do. Here's a test that will tell you when it works. So you will know when you've got 100% on all of these projects. And if you don't have 100% yet, you should keep working because some of the tests will fail or it won't give you the answer that's expected. So to be honest, these projects, you can take them to office hours, you can get help, you can get more help, you can get help after that, you can read on Piazza. They're not a great way to assess whether you've learned the material or not. Um, because almost everybody gets a perfect on almost every project if you like spent the time to you know to go through it. Uh, they are like grading is results based. If you like turn something in and it doesn't work, you're obviously not going to get the points. But um, it's so it's not a good way to assess whether you've like learned the material or not, to be honest. But it's a great way to get practice. So it's very important for the like practice aspect of things. Um, these projects, uh, fifty percent of your grade, um, they do take a long time. They, they are a bunch of work, but the idea is you will get practice. So don't procrastinate. Start right away. Get to work. Um, 
Yeah, the late policy. Uh, yeah, and this only applies to projects. That's the only thing we'll be worried about turning in late. Uh, given the global pandemic, um, we're not going to penalize late projects this semester. What I saw last semester was that, um, you know, there were so many students who, you know, not just needed an extension, but like needed two weeks. Something went horribly wrong in their life and they struggled. You know, some, someone in their family got COVID, they got COVID, uh, mental breakdowns. They, they had to take care of their little sister because school was canceled. Whatever it was, people needed more time. Um, here's what I want you guys to do. If you need an extension on a project, just send uh, the TA or myself an email. We'll get you on the list. I don't need to know why. Uh, what I do need to know is when you actually think you'll get it finished. And a heads up, we cannot accept projects after the last day of class. We also really don't have the resources to grade absolutely everything during the last week of class. So if this looks like it's about to be abused um, and we won't have those resources to grade things, uh, we will change this. But right now, this is what I'd like to do. Um, uh, turning your work in on time gets you a couple things. When we grade your work, we're going to review it and give you some comments, um, offer suggestions about how to become a better programmer. Um, and if something goes wrong and you would like to request a regrade, uh, it gives you that power too. So if you turn it in late, if it's the last week of class, we will just grade is what you get. We will not be accepting regrades. Um, couple of things that we will like automatically let you guys fix. Basically, uh, your code has to work. It's results based. If it doesn't compile, if it doesn't work for some reason, there are some things we'll we'll go ahead and work with you. Um, we will not fix any issues. We will not grade code that looks almost correct but doesn't work. Well, instead, you have to fix it. But uh, a couple of these configuration issues are number one. If you um, work on a Windows machine and then you submit it and we grade it on the Linux machine, the different system may have different issues and may not compile. So we will be grading all of the projects on the lab Linux machines. So please verify your code runs there before submitting it. And better yet, write your code on these machines. Videos coming soon about how to access the CSL machines and use the Vim editor, um, in case you've never used any of those before. Welcome to Wisconsin, if you haven't. All right, some, some bugs uh, don't cause problems every time. Um, if, if you run into a random bug that causes it to fail when we test it, but it works on your machine, we'll go ahead, we'll work with you. You can fix those issues. Obviously, if you cheated or faked the results, you've got big problems. Um, and that's no good. Uh, and again, here in black, uh, we will never fix the code for you. Never manually give you a better grade for code that almost looks correct. Um, all right, a couple other things. Uh, I catch, especially since we've moved online, I've caught a lot of students cheating. Um, so a couple things that we, I just feel like this is important. Uh, what can you do and what can I do? So feel free to talk about the code talk about strategies for solving things. Oh, I used a loop for that. Um, you can share a pseudocode or diagrams. You can share like links to online resources. Uh, copying code from online resources that is not specific to your project. You just need to cite your code. Um, just like quoting in an essay. If, you, if the um, project gets leaked and someone posts the results, you find it from a previous year and you use that, that's not acceptable. Um, don't do that. Um, so not acceptable. Uh, looking at someone's code and tipping it line by line. That's not the same, you know, that's copying. Um, straight up copying and pasting it or emailing code to someone who's, uh, um, yeah, we don't actually have partners in this class, so everyone will do all of the work on their own. I should probably update that a little bit. Um, don't email your code. Don't take pictures of someone else's project. Um, Looking at someone else's code can be dangerous if you've got a roommate who's taking the same class. It's um, real easy to look and see what they've done and then go type it in. You know, your brain just like says, oh, I get it, finally. It's much safer for the person who has finished it, finished their project, to go look at the code of someone who has not yet finished it, and then they can offer suggestions verbally. Um, when your eyes actually see the answer on someone's screen, uh, it's very difficult to not copy it. Um, and we're actually using some really advanced software to spot uh, similarity. Uh, it's the Moss um, 
Let's see, measure of software similarity detection system. It's very advanced. Uh, it doesn't matter how you rename the variables, shuffle the order of the code. It looks at um, the code structure and can figure out who has copied whose. And to be honest, I've caught, I believe I caught 11 people over the summer and we caught mm, probably 25 during the fall semester. Uh, don't cheat. And if you want to, if you really want to cheat, there's um, some actual scientific articles about how to defeat the MOS system. You're going to want to read those before you copy anyone else's work or before you try and copy a solution you find online. Uh, it's, it's actually a lot easier to just write your own code than it is to learn enough about how MOS works to not get caught. Let's see here. Oh, how to cite code. Um, just this is all I need. Uh, this is some Python code, so just comment. It'll be the double slash and C and copied from wherever you found this block of code. Um, all right, let's see here. If you require any sort of uh, accommodations, if you need extra time on a test or anything else I can help you with due to a disability, please go to the McBurney Disability Resource Center um, and have them contact me uh, with, uh, with your visa and let me know what I can do for you. Let's see, learning objectives. We're gonna learn some C, some assembly, and some machine, or some, um, uh, advanced concepts right um if you're new to wisconsin you'll need your cs account in order to log into the csl machines there's a link right there um, i believe that's one of the links on my very first uh announcement link page at the top so uh you'll need to take care of that let's see um recommendation letters uh yeah a lot of times students will ask me for a letter of recommendation after finishing the class and especially now that we've gone virtual, it's it's very unlikely that I will know you guys, you know, well enough to write a good letter. So to get into graduate school, they ask questions like, um, please tell me about this uh, language proficiency, curiosity, uh, ability to perform research. Are they going to be successful in graduate school? And if all I've seen is some homework that you've turned in, I really don't know enough to write a letter about those topics. So the best way to get a good letter is to actually <clears throat> do a project, something that uh, <clears throat> is outside of the class, and show me what you've worked on. I just need something I can write about. And you know, getting an A in class isn't enough for me to actually write a good letter. Um, in fact, the universities or internships, they already have a copy of your transcript and they know you did well. And if all that my letter says is that you did well in class, they're actually abbreviated DWIC letters, uh, they're going to ignore that. It actually detracts from your application because it really says that you don't have someone else who can write a better letter for you. Um, all right, and from here on down, official statements required on the syllabus. This is just sort of copied and pasted from like other places. The university requires this for accreditation, but some of this stuff is really important. Um, you guys have the opportunity to evaluate me and evaluate the course. This is really valuable for me. I, I value this feedback and I use it to make my course better every semester. So when the evaluation comes, please fill that out. Um, we take academic integrity very seriously. If you cheat, I will be turning you in. Um, if, you're, if anyone's curious about how that process works, if you've never been caught before and you want to know exactly what happens, I'd be happy to walk you through it. Um, let's see, accommodation for students with disabilities. This is through the McBurney Center again. Um, here's the required inclusion statement. Uh, check. And then diversity of inclusiveness. Um, yeah, everybody here is valuable, and I believe it makes the community better if uh, we all get along and find ways to respect our differences. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do my best. Uh, I know, to be honest, it's really hard when this is online because I can't see anybody, and uh, it's hard to know that people have differences. And all right, I'm going to do my best. We'll see if we can figure out a way to uh, bridge that like virtual gap and get to know each other a little better. Okay, so that was the syllabus. Really briefly, I already talked about the difference between office hours and lab hours. Office hours, um, basically you will create a one-on-one -on -one session with uh, one of the TAs and uh, we'll come to your meeting link. That way you have the power to share your screen. You can use a technology you're familiar with. It could be Zoom, WebEx. I'm a big fan of Google Meet. We can actually set something up with Blackboard Collaborate if you like are really at a loss um, and do it that way. Let's see here. Um, yeah, office hours right here. So private sessions meet one-on-one. -on -one. There's a submit a ticket request. Let me pull this up. 
So basically, you'll click that link. I'm going to try and get it embedded so it's actually right there in Canvas. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Canvas has some limitations. Um, but anyway, you'll just put in your email address, your name, uh, pronouns are optional. Uh, create a meeting link. So in this case, we recommend using Google Meet if you don't have a preference. If you're a huge fan of Zoom, send us a Zoom link. It doesn't matter. Just somewhere you can uh, share your screen with us. Um, CS login, what kind of question, either about a concept or debugging. We should probably have another option there. Uh, choose conceptual if it's not debugging, if it's anything else. Brief description of your question, and then after you do that, when you click submit, that's going to take you and create, that's going to uh, create a ticket up on the Trello management board. Here's what this looks like. Um, so when you first appear, your ticket will appear over here in the to-do list. This does take between one to two minutes for this ticket to arrive. It doesn't automatically update instantly. Uh, the TAs have a spreadsheet so we can see uh, when you do come, you know, all of the Google Forms go to a, a spreadsheet and that updates automatically. So we can see you instantly when you arrive. But this is just sort of a management system for if it's busy, you know, the day homework is due or something. So your ticket will appear over here on the left on the to-do side. When one of the TAs arrives and uh, takes a look at your work, they'll move you to in progress, just like that. And then after your question is answered, we'll put you back in the done column. Um, if you, uh, if we attend, the, like if we put this meeting link in, let's see, where's the meeting link? Debugging. Yep, okay, she's put in uh, Bucky Badger. If we go to the meeting link and you're not there, if we uh, fail to connect, we'll move you over to not present, in which case you can send us an email and say, wait, something went wrong, uh, here's a new link. Um, if you send in a ticket outside of when we have scheduled office hours, uh, no one's going to be there. Um, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll see that you've sent something in. We'll send you an email and ask you, did you resolve your question? Um, remind you where the office hour schedule is, which is currently under construction. We can see that only my office hours are available right now. Uh, so Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to, or 8.30 to 9.30, I'll be on duty. And then um, Friday is when I'm doing my live Q&A session from 8.30 to 9.30. So my week is gonna be busy in the mornings. Um, the rest of the TAs will have the, we'll fill this in after we get the schedule, the, the survey, where you guys say, you know, I work at Epic, I'm busy all day, evening office hours are the only times that work, please put them during the evening. We'll figure out a schedule that works for as many students as possible. You know, if this uh, pre-pandemic, this would just be like normal business hours, but truth is we have students all around the globe taking this section. Um, because it is the only virtual section, 100% um, virtual for uh, 354, all the students who were not like in Madison signed up for this one first if they could get in. So uh, we've got a diverse group of people from all over the world. All right, um, then for lab hours, this is just going to be, you'll just go to the Canvas BB Collaborate Ultra link also right here during office hours. So Friday, click this, then uh, let's see, there will be a session right here be able to click the session and just join us all right and last little detail the who's my ta um just so that abby isn't bombarded she's alphabetically first in all the lists uh for you guys in section three if your last name begins with a through g and you need to request an extension or something like that uh an issue that just some sort of logistics for the course please email abby if your names begin with h through p please email uh Yiming. And if your name O through L, well, whoops, Z, L through Z, uh, I'll go ahead and email Lewis here. If you're at Epic, go ahead and email um, Cameron for any of those kinds of requests. All right, for regrade requests, um, on the submission, you make a submission to Canvas. If you go check that submission again, uh, in the comments section, it'll tell you which TA graded your work and who you should talk to for regrade requests. Uh, go ahead and email that person directly. And for anything else, if it needs my attention, uh, definitely send me the email. All right, just a few more details before we wrap up this entire video. First, um, under the important links here, click Piazza, go sign up, register for this class. Think of it as participation points. Um, I don't think I, nope, there are no official participation points, but do it anyway. Um, also, if you've not yet done so, if this is your first semester at UW-Madison, please activate your CSL account. Um, or if this is your very first computer science class here, uh, activate your account. And if you were a Windows user, we're going to need to connect to the CSL machines to do the work. Um, you know, that's where we're going to grade it. That's where you guys should be doing all of your work for this semester. 
Uh, if you're a Windows user, please go ahead and install PuTTY or some other way to create an SSH connection. If you've already got a system you're happy with, definitely keep using that. No need to use PuTTY in that case. Um, I've got a video demonstrating this in, uh, coming up next. And um, this is the list of the CSL machines that are available. If you have a specific, yeah, let me open this up. A specific machine that you would enjoy using, like um, Emperor 1 through 7, you can con uh, connect to that. A uh, far better option, and I'm going to keep this right here at the top for a while, is to use um, bestlinux.cs.wisc.edu. That will go through all of these Linux machines and figure out which one has the lightest load, and that's the one you'll be logging into. So just a quick way to um, identify the best machine and get connected. And this will be a separate video uh, coming soon. Uh, please fill out the Get to Know You survey. Um, Number one thing on this is when do you want to have office hours? And as soon as we get enough input from students that, you know, I'm, everyone here is located, well, yeah, we're located around the globe. I think a lot of people are in Madison, but we also have a number of students in China, India, and Africa. So I want to know when you guys want to attend office hours. And there's probably a big part of the group who wants, like, I work during the day, I want evening office hours. So I, we'll get this figured out as soon as we actually have some data from you guys. All right, um, there's links to the textbooks again, and all right, um, that's going to be it. I'm going to wrap up the video right here. Uh, see you in the next video.